regular board meeting of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission. And I'll call it to order at uh, 1.01. I'd like to start off the meeting as we will always do with a land acknowledgement. Let me just read that out to everyone. We do this because this is right. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place and traveling route to the Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis and Inuits, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. And with that, uh, my opening remarks will be short and sweet. Basically, welcome to the very first regular meeting of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission uh, Board. And uh, today marks the beginning, I guess, of the regular monthly rhythm of the work that will uh, be done to operate and put into place a regional transit services commission. I want to welcome all those who are here today, uh, both board members and administrative staff and, and support to the commission as well as uh, public members who may be viewing us online. Uh, board, uh, we have an approval of the agenda before us. Um, Maybe Al, if we could see the, the whole agenda. There we go. So, and there will be a motion to approve the agenda as presented unless we have a comment. Uh, seeing no comments, can I make some, have somebody make the motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank, so moved, thank you, Councillor Harris. And uh, you know what, we're gonna try, can we, you know what, we're still gonna uh, vote with our hands. Okay, uh, so uh, can I call the question then, all in favor of the agenda as presented, raise your hands and that is unanimous, thank you very much. In the package that was sent out, we also have the uh, minutes for the February 12th inaugural meeting of the board and uh, they were in the package. I'll call for any errors or omissions, any comments in that reg regard? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, Councillor Finstadt, was that a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, seeing no uh, changes required, I move the minutes be uh, adopted as presented. Thank you very much. I'll call the question then on the approval of the February 12th minutes. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is uh, administrative update. Uh, Mr. Josh Cole, if you would please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just for everyone's benefit, uh, we'll have this as a standing item on kind of administrative update matters that uh, we'd want to bring to the board at board meetings. And so just to run through a few of the key ones that we're looking at and kind of want to inform you of, and some some we've discussed this with you, even touched on in the previous board mm -hmm. meeting, but kind of in the, in the area of communications and outreach, as most of you know, we've established the info at emtsc.ca email for inquiries. So that's publicly available. And so we'll begin, we have begun to manage, respond to that. And so with that, uh, we certainly, um, We'll start to track all those communications. Um, also, as I mentioned before, it's an opportunity for board members, um, if in need, to direct um, any kind of anyone in the public or any potential vendors uh, that have inquiries um, to that email address. And again, we'll continue to manage it, respond, but also. Um, I think it was uh, reinforced by Councillor Harris to actually have a registry of those types of communications that once that builds up and we actually have some content for you, we'll begin to share that as a, a matter of, of kind of regular course. Um, and then again, the last item on communications, which is pretty critical, and especially in the it, to help us run the meetings and make sure that the meeting agendas, minutes and notices are available publicly is getting the website development up and running and, and securing some communication support. So those are all um, ongoing right now. 
Um, just before I jump to the other items, any questions on those, on that bucket kind of around communications? Don't, I'm seeing some head shakes, so I'll keep moving. Um, kind of critical to kind of our earliest days is getting some of the uh, back of house functions in place. And so uh, administration is currently looking at um, and working to secure banking and credit facilities. So that's ongoing. And then again, in terms of um, getting the, uh, the kind of the, the organization foundation up and running, um, can, work continues to fill some of the short-term support functions in HR, finance, and other areas that would be supporting the commission um, really immediately um, into the, over the next few months. So I don't think there's anything that new there, but just kind of want to make sure that um, everyone's kind of aware we're at on the administrative side of things. And I see uh, Mayor Ralph with a hand up. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Chair, through to Josh. Um, in regards to the banking, uh, securing banking, are we putting an RFP out for that? I'm going to pass that one to Al. I don't know that we would do a robust formal RFP, but we want to make sure there's a process. Yeah, in the early stages, we're not considering an RFP for the initial. Uh, we're looking at institutions that are used to working with the existing member municipalities participating in the commission, uh, specifically with uh, experience around transit financing. Okay, the, the reason why I ask is the uh, EMRB for several years operated without any uh, real commitment from a bank and uh, our service charges were crazy after we the finance committee started looking at them. And we were also losing a lot of dollars on investments because uh, we just had money sitting there not, not uh, making any money for us. So it's just something I think we need to be aware of in the future. Once we get established that we need to, you know, we need to get some type of a commitment from whoever we do our banking with. So. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. So for some of these earlier services that we need to procure and secure, um, we will go through a process to get quotes and to get specifics to make sure that we're, you know, obviously adhering to kind of public standards of procurement, but also getting good pricing. Um, you know, we're not in the ability right now to have kind of full procurement processes, but we'll kind of make sure that it's certainly um, clear and transparent. Uh, and also there's kind of a record to make sure that we're meeting those requirements. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a, a question, uh, Josh, on uh, the uh, anticipated horizon for getting these contracts in place. Are we talking months? Or are we talking weeks or, or days? We're, ho we're hoping days. Um, and so we have advanced conversations with some of those contracts. And so um, you know, part of today and the approval of budget is helps advance that along. And then um, we expect that we could have people in place um, starting hopefully next week, even at least in, in, in some of those functions. Fair enough, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Laurie. Thank you, through the chair to our administration support. Um, in regards to the established email, the domain that is used, the emtsc.ca, have we secured that domain at this point in time? Uh, Again, it's we understand it's being used in interim, and there may be name changes, etc. But uh, have you know it doesn't take much to secure the domain. Has that been yeah. explored? Uh, thanks for that question. So we went ahead and secured quite a few domain names. Um, so I don't know if the total count is around fifteen or something. Um, that being one of them, and you know some CAs and .coms and variations of them. So those are secure, including that one. Um, obviously. Uh, if and when at such time the commission has a more of a public facing rider facing brand, we'd have to kind of embark on securing those domains too. But right now I think we're pretty well covered. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, are we moving on to new business now then? Uh, yeah. John? Okay. So, we can, so well, we can move to... So I'll kind of hand it back to you to quickly hand back to us, but yeah. We'll okay, well, business. thank you very much, Josh. Yeah, uh, on to the new business item then. And I take it both you, Josh, and Al will be covering off the items before the, the board. So thank you. Yep, that's right, Mr. Chair. So we will cover off those uh, in front of you, see the new business. Um, if you look at your agenda, there's actually six items listed. 
um, really when we kind of deal with the, the establishments of committees, we'll, we'll bundle those into one for purpose of discussion and motion. So really there are three items here in front of us today. One is the authority matrix. The second is the interim 2021 operating budget and then the establishment of committees. And so I'll kick things off on the authority matrix, um, all of which is in your package. I want to touch on some of the highlights. If you need, if there are specific questions and we need to put it up on a screen, we're happy to do so. But just to just to kind of give some broad strokes. So obviously this is needed just so that there's that clarity of decision making and authority between um, you know, board, administration, et cetera. And, and to ensure that some of those in those critical functions that you were just asking about um, in terms of approving the policies, there's something as simple as signing a check we all are on the same page and there's kind of a code to which we adhere to in terms of um, who approves, who provides information and, um, and all, all in between. And so with the new organization being set up, we wanted to make sure that this was in place. Important to note that in these very early stages, this authority matrix uh, puts more at the, I would say approval feet of the board that would probably be the case in six months or a year or any time beyond that. And so I think we've had that conversation where that in this early stage, there might be times where um, their approvals would come to the board that may not necessarily with a more mature organization. And so you'll see in the matrix reflected that way. And so what we're suggesting and recognizing this, this will evolve pretty quickly, but also over time. And that we're recommending that within six months, we have kind of a prescribed renew, review date of this to come back. And at that point, the assumption is that a CEO is in place, the board's got a bit of their rhythm, so the, the organization has begun to be formed, and then that we would um, have that review, that review process. So I'm happy to speak to any of the specific um, instances where it's the, either the CEO or administration, the chair or board as approver. Um, and, but maybe it's easiest to open it to questions because you all have the document in front of you. Any questions? Actually, you know what, um, in terms of just uh, showing the public of what we're talking about, uh, if we could just display the uh, authority matrix and uh, sure. so, some people call it the delegation of authority. Yeah. Um, um, and, and maybe I'll just, uh, maybe if it's helpful, uh, I can just kind of highlight one of them or two of them just to kind of see how we're, we're laying this out. Perfect. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, question, Councillor Councilor Walters. Yeah, so just to build on that a little bit more specifically, maybe as you're showing one, like walk us through a decision making process and, and where you think this may be in the next six months the most challenging. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. And so I would maybe I'll start there. And I think um, I don't think it's a challenge, but I think it's just maybe a, a a recognition that the board will more actively, and you can kind of see in that first um, column the board is approver. Right. You can see that there's quite a few items there that the board would be approving. Um, and so, for example, I'll give you one. Um, say communications, marketing, and advertising. There's going to be that might be one that may begin to be delegated to a CEO at a certain date. And so there'll be conversations like that. But what we've tried to outline here is that the, there's the specific in the, in the column on the far left, um, the process that we're dealing with. And then there's the, all the columns that would identify who the approver is. And so that's the A, um, who reviews, because there's some instances like say on financial controls, the board would approve but the audit and finance committee has a reviewing role. And the P is the um, preparer, the preparation. And so you can kind of see that could be CEO or could be management. And so you see the, um, the, um, the kind of the, the way it's laid out there. Um, one thing I, I would just note is there's also a few items where the chair has special, um, you know, approving uh, delegation that um, alongside the board or above and beyond the board. And so you can kind of see an example on say disbursements with check signings. That would just be something at this early stage, there'd be a practical consideration that, um, you know, we would need the, the chair to approve that. 
Chair. Question from Councillor Harris. Actually, I'll, I'll let the chair take those. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Councillor Harris. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, would the R for recommendation or review also be recommendation as well? Do we see things flowing through those two committees? Ultimately, then uh, from administration validated by the committee and then ultimately presented to the board for approval. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, and, and maybe we need to kind of call out that nuance, but that is that is clearly, and as we kind of discuss, kind of teased up our conversation we'll be having shortly about um, committee structures and their terms of reference and their role. Um, clearly they have a role in, in often they will be kind of the first set of eyes um, that will bring recommendations, then bring recommendations to the board for approval. So yeah, uh, that, that, that would be accurate. So as the organization matures and a CEO is in place and becomes more in touch and in tune with what uh, business activities we need to dispense with, um, it would generally be coming that way, I would imagine, with input from the board, or excuse me, input from the committees, so to speak. Yeah. So, so we, we would expect that um, items in front of those committees would certainly the committee would kind of shape it, leave their imprint on it, bring that then to obviously initially prepared by, by, by staff and management. And then that would move on to the board for a final approval, recognizing the board still can have that, you know, that has that role to again, alter it, um, but would be, would be making that decision with the kind of work already completed by the committee and the recommendations brought forward from the committee. Okay. So this uh, matrix doesn't under or doesn't dispense with the potential that we may end up with something like an operations committee at some point in the future, would we? Yeah, yeah. I think um, part of the review is because some of these things will shift as the organization matures. It's also the the prerogative and kind of the, the of the board to strike new committees at any given time, and so I would expect. And we fully expect that as certainly a service were to move over, but even before then, there may be other committees or task force set up. Uh, not to jump too far ahead to the committee conversation, we're also recognizing, you know, kind of the, um, it is eight board members um, and there's, you know, a lot of work in these early stages. And so trying to keep the committee somewhat lean um, and streamlined to two at the outset. But yeah, at, over time, we would expect there'd be additional committees. Great. Any other questions? We can maybe just slide, Al, if you don't mind, just showing the second page of it, just so we can show it on the screen. Again, so things like credit and borrowing, some of the expenditures, grant applications. So, um, so today we're seeking approval for this, but really the approval comes with the condition that um, there will be a prescribed review point in uh, and no later than six months. I just think we, we kind of are, are firm believers that um, there'll be significant enough change in that, that time that will uh, require that. Just a question around the, uh, uh, you know, the logistics of this, uh, I mean, whatever banking institution that we'd be a part of, there would be a, a slate of officers that would have to sign off uh, signatories. Um, I note that the board chair is there for uh, approvals for some. I mean, this this implies that the vice is there as well. Right? Yeah. Uh, given that uh, somebody may not be available for that, right? Yeah, that does imply that. The other thing we just note there with the one role of the vice chair is, uh, well, the chair would um, approve expenses of other board members. It would be the we would need a, the vice chair to kind of approve the board's the chair sorry the chair's expenses. Fair enough. Okay. Any other questions before we move along? Okay, seeing none. Thank you. So I think. Um, Are we looking for a motion to? Yeah, we'll we'll put that on the screen for you. I'd be happy to make that motion. <laughs> Mayor Ralph, uh, do you want to read it into the record? Sure. That the board adopt the authority matrix as presented at the February 18th, 2021 board meeting, and that the authority matrix be reviewed for suitability within six months and no later than the end of August 2021, considering the growth of the commission and potential changes to required authorities. 
Thank you very much. Uh, accept that motion. Any opening comments? Okay. Any debates uh, on the rest of the board members? Uh, Councillor Walters. Yeah, and, and just to say and, and basically repeat uh, what we've we've been talking about, which is that this makes a lot of sense today. It may not make as much sense in six months or in a year, but the fact that we have a review uh, timeline uh, or, or touch point baked into what we're approving here is, I think, very wise. So thanks to uh, Josh and Alan for, for putting this together. I'll be happy to vote yes. Thank you, Councillor Walters. Any other comments? Mayor Ralph, any closing comments? Just, uh, this is the right step, uh, you know, something we need to do. Um, and again, as, uh, as Councillor Walters stated, we've got a date in there that to, for it to be automatically reviewed. And if we need to re review it or make changes beforehand, we can do that as a board. So, but uh, yeah, that's, so I would hope that everybody supports it. Okay, on that note, I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. That's uh, proved unanimously. Thank you very much. And thank you, Josh, for that presentation. Uh, on to the next one. Okay, thank you. So I'll just uh, go through the interim 2021 operating budget. And again, you've got the details in the package. I'll, I'll run through some of the highlights here. <clears throat> Pardon me, and then I can put the uh, actual budget up on the screen. But it's important for the board to have a starting budget uh, to begin with, also mandated by the bylaws. So this moves us through that first stage. What we've done given the early stages is we've actually taken the budget from the business case that was prepared and amended back in June of 2020 uh, that takes 2020 and 2021's budgets and combines them, <clears throat> recognizing that to date there's been nothing to suggest that those early startup budgets, which recall are prior to integration of services, so they do relate to incremental costs and startup, uh, that would suggest they're understated. So uh, they still appear to be the most appropriate budget to use to help guide uh, purchasing decisions and spending decisions in the early months of the commission, at least. Uh, and so we're looking for the adoption of that as the beginning budget. And again, uh, to the decision authority to put a requirement for a review of that budget uh, within three months of the CEO being onboarded so that they have an opportunity to take a look at that again, further into the maturity of the organization. Uh, and take a look at that for applicability. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, so that's in there as well uh, as we go through, but by approving the budget, it does allow us then to, uh, you know, really fit that into the authority matrix and make some of those spending decisions that are appropriate and move forward with the business uh, initially at hand. So what I'll do, I'll just change my screen here. And I'll move down into the operating budget. Uh, and so you can see it here, we've essentially taken our 2020 budget and our 2020, 2020 forecast and 21 forecast from the business case uh, and integrated them for a combined amount. And what you'll see, no income obviously for the commission in terms of either operating or grant money uh, or contributions uh, from municipalities. And then we run into our expenses. So we do have some forecast expenses in 2020, some of which has been uh, spent already on behalf of the commission from member uh, municipalities that have supported the uh, those expenditures. Uh, and then we have the budgets for 2021, primarily around branding, uh, infrastructure and assets related to uh, physical space when we're permitted to do that, uh, legal and professional ongoing support for establishing the commission, uh, organizational, so budget there to help uh, in the creation and the definition of roles and responsibilities and rolling out the uh, functionality of the commission. Some money in there, 100,000 for public engagement, uh, some dollars in there as well in terms of service delivery. I should note some of these, like the public engagement, the branding exercise and the public engagement, you'll see them here in 2021. They also carry forward into 2022. Uh, with different amounts as we move into uh, to creating the integration of services. So those are back in the business case. We have some money in 2021 for service delivery, which is the technical planning around the delivery of those services and beginning the detailed uh, planning for that. Program delivery and supports in terms of standing up the organization. And then we have, uh, so those are one-time expenses not expected to occur on an ongoing basis year over year. Then we have our incremental costs who are called associated with establishing the commission which are costs over and above what municipalities are originally paying for their services. <clears throat> so we know we're gonna have to staff up additional people. Uh, this is where you have your CEO, 
uh, amounts as well as other C-suite and different positions within the commission that have to start to form uh, again, some office lease and utility costs, policy and legal ongoing supports, as opposed to the startup costs, uh, technology uh, costs of borrowing, uh, and then other incremental costs, kind of the miscellaneous category for things that may be uh, realized over time. So we've got 422,000 from 2020, another 3.3 .3 million in 2022 in terms of standing it up. So a budget of about 3.7 million uh, combined for calendar year 2021. Uh, in terms of the budget that would be here to be approved uh, today, which, if you recall back to the original business case, uh, is funded through uh, credit facilities and then recuperated over time through the savings that the commission generates versus the contributions from municipalities, which commence in 2022. So okay. pause there and see if yeah. there's any questions or further, further details. Nothing here will have changed from the uh, business case and the presentations that occurred earlier in time. Okay, we've got Councillor Harris and then Councillor Walters. So Al, thanks. This is a good first stab. So we will see as the organization matures, we'll see a more robust budget with appropriate object codes for various activity um, that we would see in the both the revenue and the expense um, categories. Would that be correct? That's correct. So the CEO's first responsibility will be adjust this one and then start to build out the, the budgets for 2022 as well when services will be uh, integrated uh, and also start to combine that with the annual business plan, right? That would come forward to the board. So you'll, you'll start to see that progress in a reasonable manner over the rest of the calendar year. So this would generally be a kind of a per meeting information that would be presented to show status of uh, budget and various things. Obviously not too detailed, but an appropriate level, I would imagine. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. good. thanks. Councillor Walters. Uh, thanks, Wes. So Alan, maybe just talk a little bit about, you know, because we did talk about this more generally in the development of the business case, but now that the sort of rubber's hitting the road, so to speak, uh, the process through which we you know, raise cash through the credit facilities, the timing of that, how that's being done. Um, and then at what point that savings begins to pay that back. So maybe just sort of detail that a little bit more clearly for transparency. Sure. Yeah, so, so the fundamental principle of the case was that uh, municipalities would generally contribute similar amounts to the commission that they're paying for their transit services today. Uh, the commission does borrow for the first year of its operations for 2021 and a little bit into 2022 until the municipalities start changing their contributions from running their own transit services and contribute that money into the commission to run the commission services. So those contributions staying consistent throughout the business, throughout the, the business case period was that five year period. So those contributions staying consistent through the business case period provide plus revenues through fees and, and other ancillary right. revenues support the revenue side of the case. So maybe just if I can interrupt the timing of, you know, the process of, yep. so we're establishing relationships presently with the credit agencies, the yep. financial institution, because we're a legal organization, we could do that knowing that we have municipal backstop, correct? Correct. And knowing that that money is going to, so it's a pretty surefire thing for the banks, right? Because these municipalities have a tax base. Uh, and then that, the, that borrowing kind of ramps up and then eventually ramps down as our fees start to be contributed through the realized savings of the service. But that's, so maybe talk about the timeline, like when we start paying that back, when we sure. stop borrowing, et cetera. Yeah, that's that. That's a good point. Thank you for the clarification. So yes, that does ramp up and continues to ramp up into about 2023, where the debt continues to climb. And then from 23 through to 2026, that debt declines as the savings are realized in excess of the contributions from municipalities. Uh, and so you get to what I'll call a break even or, or a perspective where that credit facility has been repaid from a from a standing up the organization perspective has been repaid and the contributions and fees uh, or service costs are sufficient to maintain the operations. So it ramps up until about 2023 and then it gets recovered through 24, 25 and finally into 26. Okay, and then just to follow up on that, the parties just, and this kind of goes back to the authority matrix, the parties responsible for negotiating that borrowing are who? 
it's approved by the board, but who's responsible <clears throat> for the Right. So ultimately, at this point in time, it would be the administrative support that starts to work combined with, uh, you know, I would say a couple of the municipalities who are making the introductions into those institutions for us, right, to, to begin those conversations. Uh, and then I would say that, you know, when the time is appropriate and will have established, you know, as we progress through today, we talk about the audit and finance committee, for example, right? So we would do the initial discussions and be able to bring forward a number, a, a few different options. Uh, for consideration and then work that through the audit and finance committee and ultimately up to the board for decision. So then last question and my tri trifecta here is, so once you have, we have cash, so that's going to take a while. So how, what, what's filling the gap between today and the moment that we have access to cash? Yes, so we, um, we, an we an anticipate the access to cash uh, at the end of March. And so to date, the costs that have been incurred by the commission and likely for, you know, uh, I would say the next few weeks are supported by a couple of participating municipalities, right? Specifically to this point in time, Edmonton and St. Albert uh, largely have been the contributors in supporting and backstopping expenses that have been incurred on behalf of the commission. Uh, so we'd anticipate that that cash be there by the end of March to repay those particular items. Uh, and in other respects where um, some, uh, some contractors and others have been supporting the standing up the commission, uh, they're comfortable at this point in time waiting until that uh, facility is established. And I lied. So last, this is really my last question. That there's what you just described to us in no way deviates from what we understood in the business case prior to all of our councils deciding to proceed with the initiative here. With the commission. Correct. Yeah, this process and timeline and activities are still in line with what was anticipated in the business case. Thank you. Councillor Finstead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Question I have is when it comes to securing a, a uh, credit facility, there's a perception of uh, municipal support. support versus actual uh, municipal support. So my question is, will any of the, or all of the uh, municipalities be expected to provide uh, guarantees with respect to the credit facility, or is it gonna be just our, our good name alone? Uh, just thinking in, in view of a normal uh, commercial credit facility is uh, they don't, most lending institutions don't care how strong you appear, they still want, uh, they want the hard and fast security. We at this point have nothing to offer other than our good name. So is it expected that uh, some or all the municipalities would actually guarantee the uh, credit facility? I don't have an answer for that. We weren't able to really hold any conversations. So we got to a point of having legal standing. So the best answer I can give is we'll have to see what particular institutions may want from a uh, support perspective in terms of security and certainly that'll be something that'll come back through to the board in terms of updates and decision making processes so I, I don't have a direct answer for that at this point in time okay thank you fair enough uh, it'll be a question that gets answered fairly quickly if we hope to have money by the end of uh, march thank you yeah uh mayor ralph uh, just, just i have just a couple of questions in regards to expenses um the office lease and utilities, is that an estimate still, or is that something that I know that uh, we're talking about going to St. Albert because they had space available? So is that, uh, again, is that just an estimate or is that something that we've, we've you know, lined up? No, as, as purely estimates at this point, Mayor Ralph. So uh, yes, there has been discussion and uh, St. Albert was nice enough to apply one of their physical addresses as was required to create, right, in terms of standing up the commission. Uh, we're a ways from being able to be in physical space at this point in time. And so we are taking a look at a variety of options in terms of office location, which may be St. Albert for an interim period of time, or it may be a uh, third party location, right? An independent location uh, where the commission ultimately gets housed for the early stages. So th this is an estimate at this point, and it is just uh, would be around basic facilities to provide uh, a place to sit and to meet for a few individuals and then be reviewed as time progresses and as the commission continues to build in size and, and complexity. Okay. So, so there, are no, there are no commitments to space at this point in time. There's no agreements executed. There's no quotes provided 
uh, or locations permanently permanently selected at this point. Okay. The other question I guess I have, and it's something that uh, it's not a it's not something you probably think about at the top, is the the office setup and cost to do associated with that. Uh, you know, we are going to have to be setting those up, and so there is a you know the cost of furniture, the cost of equipment to set it up, and that's all going to come once we need you know. Once we hire a CEO, um, he's going to want to have some place and uh, have the the support and the and a chair to sit in. So, I'm not... that, that's correct. And we have line items for like when you think of infrastructure and assets here for seventy six thousand in twenty twenty one, along mm -hmm. with office lease and utilities of ninety six. Those are meant to address uh, address those requirements. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to just get clarification. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Okay. Well, we get an opportunity to, uh, to pass a motion that approves the very first uh, budget. Uh, Councillor Walters? Yeah, I'm happy to move that the board adopt the interim 2021 operating budget as presented at the February 18th, 2021 board meeting and that the operating budget be reviewed for suitability within three months of chief executive officer onboarding to the commission. Fair enough, thank you very much. Uh, accept that motion. Any opening comments uh, comes for Walters? No, I'm, I think the motion speaks for itself, Wes, thanks. <laughs> any, any debate? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of approving the 2021 operating budget, please raise your hand. And that is approved unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Al, Josh, back to you. Great, thank you. Um, so next step, and we kind of alluded to this a little bit when uh, talking about the authority matrix is the establishment of committees. And so we'll give you a bit of an overview and hopefully getting your feedback today, but also your approval to set up the structure as, as recommended. And so at this point, um, and I know there were questions and I think an acknowledgement that at any time there may be additional committees and task forces added. But at this point, we would start with an HR and compensation committee and an audit and finance committee. And our expectation is those would be mainstays and would kind of be part of the fabric of the organization and the board uh, for as long as the board is around. And so uh, a lot of immediate needs for these committees to get up and going. And so obviously the committee, this, the HR and comp side provides continued oversight around the CEO recruitment process. There's a lot of, um, 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 and then finance would be looking at budget, some of the stand up of the back office. We talked about, um, uh, getting the contractors up. The code of conduct um, is something that the HR and comp committee would look at too. So there's a lot of pieces that would keep these committees uh, pretty busy right off the hop. Um, the, the, and I think that you're all familiar with the structure, so I don't have to go through this too much, but really the intent is to do some of the heavy lifting or the sausage making as it's kind of described at the committee level. Um, so it gives people some time and opportunity to work through things uh, before brought to the board. And so that would be a lot of the role of the committees. Um, we have reached out to, uh, to all of you to get kind of a sense of where you'd be interested in serving. And so um, in, in, in a moment, we'll kind of share that and where things have landed and a recommendation how we could split the workload between the eight of you in terms of um, your roles on each committee. The other thing I wanted to kind of take a note, make a note of before we move to kind of reviewing the actual membership and the structure was there was a discussion about setting up a distinct separate bylaw and policy task force. Um, and we've, as we've reviewed this and for a lot of practical considerations, I think, you know, we want to always lean towards not um, over encumbering anyone in terms of their their, their responsibilities to the commission, but at the same time, it is a small organization. It's just at startup. Let's not get it too, um, you know, too process heavy when, when maybe not needed. And so we believe that the work that was gonna be handled by that task force pretty logically can be assigned to each of those committees and kind of builds out their work plan for early days. And so really it is the recommendation will see us establish, you know, the two committees and then some of the work that was going to go to the policy 
um, some of the policy and, and bylaw work will go to those committees. And for example, a code of conduct policy fits perfectly with the HR and comp committee anyways. Um, and so uh, it will beef up the, the tasks of the two main committees a little bit. Um, but again, I think it keeps things streamlined. It recognizes that um, at startup, you have additional responsibilities as highlighted by the authority matrix anyways. Um, you'll all be at the board meetings and you're kind of, sp each, each of you sit on a committee. And so there's quite a bit to happen there. And so um, uh, before we go to maybe looking at what we're recommending in terms of structure, any questions on um, kind of the rationale um, about not going with the, the task force at this time, or is that kind of making sense? Any questions? Uh, it does make sense. Hey, okay. Uh, the fence down. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, both this committee and the one that follows uh, make a lot of sense, uh, not only from a startup perspective, but an ongoing basis uh, thereafter as well, because both of these functions are extremely critical, uh, <laughs> none more so than at the present time when we're trying to work through the uh, early startup phase, but after the fact, just for uh, transparency, accountability, and uh, making sure that we are keeping all of our municipalities uh, safe, if you will. Yeah, re really good point, Councillor. And, and, and even to kind of echo Councillor Harris's point earlier about, you know, the, the role of these committees goes beyond kind of a reviewing function. And there's certainly kind of that R can be recommend too. And, and this is a chance where the expectation is, a, you know, a lot of the work gets done. And so that um, um, you can dig in on issues and certainly give the oversight as you just described. So maybe we can move to then the um, kind of how, um, again, based on feedback we received from all of you, um, obviously we've got an even number. So not ideal or perfect, but um, I think recognizing that in the committee work will largely be done by consensus. I think that is fine. And so what we have laid out in front of you here, membership for the audit and finance committee, for the HR and compensation committee, and with recommended chairs and vice chairs, um, expectation would be that those would change, rotate or change over time too. So there'd be opportunities for other people to step into roles as their time maybe became more available or vice versa. Um, but uh, an opportunity, um, uh, but certainly we think that this is, um, sets us up to do the important work that Councillor Finstad just described um, and kind of start, to, um, you know, kind of building up this agenda and, and moving these forward. Okay, questions, okay. comments? Hopefully everyone's okay with where they see their name. <laughs> I, I think it reflects uh, everybody's uh, basic uh, request to be vis-a-vis uh, -vis either the HR and comp or the audit and finance, correct? Yeah, it, basically, and thanks to everyone for their feedback. Um, we, we, we think we reflected everyone's preferences. Um, and there's some good continuity, we think, by having, Councillor Harris um, as chair of the HR and comp committee because he's been doing a lot of the work um, in that kind of informal committee that we've had been going for a while. Um, and so we think that um, good balance on both. Perfect. Now the idea is, is that uh, you, you talked a little bit about uh, sort of um, choice of chair, vice chair into the future. That's, that's within the committee itself, is that correct? Or does that yeah, have to come back to the board? The expectation would be that the 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 um, the committees would would do that. I guess if there was ever an instance where they couldn't agree, it might require the board. But um, and that's something we'll make sure is clear in um, in the procedural bylaws. Fair enough. Uh, so maybe no other comments. Is there a motion here? Yep. There is, and, and we can flip to that and, and really is just stating that it would set up the committees and, and what the membership of the committees would be at the outset. Okay. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Laurie, go for it. I'll make the motion that the board confirm the creation of both the audit and finance and the HR and compensation standing committees, which are to function on an ongoing basis and that the board member representatives listed below, including the chairs and vice chairs are confirmed. And would you like me to read in the membership for the committees? Please. 
So for the Audit and Finance Committee, it has Justin Lurie, myself as the chair, Chantal McKenzie as vice chair, Ray Ralph and Glenn Finstad. And for our HR and Compensation Committee, we have Gordon Harris as the chair, Sam Munkoff Swain as the vice chair, and Michael Walters and Wes Broadhead. Thank you very much. Uh, I accept that motion. Any opening comments? No, I just want to uh, thank our administrative working group for all of their assistance on this and, and getting these set up and moved forward so that we can continue the, the great work that we have as the board to help support them in the in moving forward the commission. Thank you. Any debate on anybody? Uh, Councillor McKenzie. Yes, thank you. Uh, not necessarily a debate, just a comment. I think as this popped up on the screen, went into my head, I'm wondering if the motion should include our names or would it be better to have representative from Spruce Grove, just in case something happens and, you know, I get replaced for, from Spruce Grove. I, you know, I, I don't foresee that happening. Anyways, it's just, just a question as to whether we should actually include our names or not in the motion. I'm fine with it, but just a question of kind of point of order. No, it's a, it's a good question. I, I think we would lean towards names because if, if there was, a, as our bylaws are written, if, if one of you were to leave or be replaced, it would trigger the need to move another motion like this to, to set the membership, reset the membership. Um, and so the membership doesn't necessarily flow with a um, municipality. It's, it's tied to the board member. So it, it, it would require kind of a resetting um, of, of the committees if that were to happen. Perfect. And that's just, I just wanted clarity on that. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question then. All in favor, please raise your hand. And again, that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. So we're going on then to item seven on the uh, agenda. Is that correct? Okay, so, so basically uh, this was um, uh, presented uh, publicly and the intent here was that uh, uh, perhaps this would be a standing item on the agenda of the board. Um, that is open for debate. Um, I'm not sure that we need it uh, on an ongoing basis, but nonetheless, what I thought we would do with this uh, item uh, today was just to ask anybody uh, uh, on the board whether or not we wanted to uh, raise it, uh, an issue or report on whether or not uh, we've had any uh, contact with the media. Uh, when, when the uh, commission was set up here a couple of weeks ago, all of us on the board had opportunities to speak with media within our uh, respective municipalities and, and on TV or on the radio. Uh, we have kept a log of such activities. Um, just wondering if anybody would like to report whether or not they have had uh, further comments uh, with the, uh, the media and want to include that in the ongoing uh, log of such activities of the board. Has anybody had any further? Mayor Ralph. Yes, I did an interview actually yesterday. It was uh, over the phone with the um, Grant McEwen, and they had uh, called me. Mainly, uh, their 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 comments or their questions were more because Gavin is, doesn't have a transit commission or doesn't have any transit right now. So that was kind of where the uh, where it was coming from. But uh, it was a really good interview, very positive. Uh, and uh, the person that I was discussing talking to, um, she lives in in actually in Millwoods. That uh, you know comes out to the Devon area and everything, you can really see the huge benefits for our region. You know, I had an opportunity to talk about region and how the regional cooperation, how we've you know we this is kind of the a great step forward for our region, not just the town of Devon. So I did ask for them to send me a link because it will be electronic once it goes through their editor and everything. So once I receive that, I'll make sure that I pass it on to everybody. So fair enough. Thank you, Mayor Ralph. Any others? Well, I'd like to report that I got a request from a local uh, university student who's engaged in uh, uh, 
urban planning studies. And he wanted to talk to uh, the issue around uh, bike share uh, opportunities within the region. And I got to tell you, I tried to beg off saying, you know what, it'd probably be best if you wait for the CEO and talk to that individual who know much more than I did. Said he had only a couple of days before he had to turn in his work. So uh, the only reason I raise this is that the, the idea of what we're about in terms of regional transit service provision and how it might uh, integrate with other modes of transportation I, is capturing the imagination of, of our young people and our business community and how that might play out uh, going into the future. And it was an encouraging conversation I had with this uh, uh, young uh, individual. And uh, if the future is in uh, the hands of individuals like uh, him, we're in good place. So anyway, I just wanted to report that uh, I suspect all of us from time to time will be asked to uh, comment on things like that. So. Anything else to report? Having not, I think it's time for a motion to go in camera. We've got a, uh, yeah. Councillor uh, Mukoff Swain. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't quite sure that it said item seven, um, but it didn't talk about the round tables. I, I just uh, thought I'd take, take this opportunity now. I, I want a few folks have, have, have kind of reached out, you know, a lot, a lot of excitement as I've talked about in Beaumont. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about. Um, a lot lately is around uh, the public engagement that's going to be coming up to make sure that we design a system that works uh, for everyone here. So uh, I'm wondering, um, not, not an answer to here, but um, is there going to be um, kind of more a uh, planning or a strategy session for, for the board or when do we, when do we kind of um, look at kind of what, what 2021 looks like and how that's going to be rolled out? Um, obviously this, this dollars in our new interim budget, which is great. Um, so I'm just curious around the, the time, are we going to have a discussion as, as a board around that, recognizing we don't have a CEO yet, but just, just curious around the timing for that public engagement and, and what, what role as a board we have in terms of shaping that? Excellent question. Uh, let me do the soft shoe and send that to Josh. <laughs> um, really, really good question, uh, Councillor, through, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, certainly you can't do the uh, service design without public engagement. And so we've, we've scheduled for public engagement. Originally planned for the summer, um, and certainly the board would be uh, have a hand in, in shaping that and deciding on that. Um, the recognition is that um, uh, with what's just happening in the world with the pandemic, um, that those timelines may shift a little bit. And so it may push into kind of late summer, fall. Um, but the expectation is that um, we would develop a public engagement plan. That's something that we would want board um, kind of sign off and, and influence on. And then that would be a big piece of going out and really would go kind of hand in glove with developing your, with the service plan, right? I don't think you can have one without the other. Um, and so um, the most immediate thing towards that is that, we are, we are looking to reach out to some firms who can help us in the area of public engagement. Um, and so that's something that I know we mentioned uh, to the board at the last meeting. Um, we're exploring that and we wanna circle back with you on that to see if that um, makes sense to go in that direction. But uh, we at least wanna know what's out there in terms of what could support that effort. Um, but the other th point that you mentioned, which is a good one is that, um, I think we want to make sure that the board continues to, um, from a strategic perspective, see where all these pieces fit in on a timeline and has a say in that, especially. Thank you, uh, Chair, if you don't mind, uh, just to follow up. Yeah, I think that that's all I'm really looking for. And maybe for, for our next board meeting is just, just plot a, a draft timeline on when we think these things might, might occur. Um, but what, what you've shared today is, is enough for me to, to go back and, and you know, share a rough for timeline anyway. So um, thank you for that, appreciate it. Jason. Great question, Sam. Any other uh, round table comments, questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, we need a motion to go on camera and the various uh, sections of the, there we are, yes all those sections of the act that we go into camera for. I'll make that motion. 
Wes. Thank, and thank you, Councillor Walters. Go ahead. Do you want me to read that whole thing? Um, it's on the screen for people who are watching. I'll, I'll just move that the board moving camera in accordance with the provisions of Division Two exceptions to closure of Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, FOIP, uh, RSA 2000 CF-25, including all the following items listed on the screen. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Councillor Walters. Any uh, questions? Okay, call the question, all in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Al, what, two minutes? Yeah, why don't you take two or three minutes for a quick break and we'll uh, uh, we'll make sure it's down to the appropriate participants. Uh, we've made this motion. So oh, you have? Okay. Yeah, we are we are in public right now. And uh, this is the motion uh, before us, Sam. If you want to make that motion, yes, yeah, so I'll move that subject to approval of contractual arrangements. The board directs the chair to retain Ernst and Young, UI, on an interim basis to provide administrative and operational support pending the appointment of a CEO and the hiring of staff. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, any opening comments? Any? Just uh, that EY's done an incredible job um, right right through this um, place, and, and I'm really happy to have them uh, continue on an interim basis. And I'll be uh, I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Harris. Yeah, I will support it as well. I think this uh, maintains a continuity in the work that we've been doing thus far. And based on the budget pr projection or uh, proposal, this would uh, stay within our uh, financial capability to provide uh, that level of service uh, to the board going forward. So I think it, it's a wise and prudent move and I'll support it on that basis. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, I just want to uh, also say that I've got full support on this and, and a huge thank you to EY and, and the four main team members that will be part of this. Um, I, I really appreciate having that um, confidence in us until we do hire the CEO. And uh, not that I don't want you to work in with us, but hopefully that's a short term and we can get moving on with this. So it's exciting, but thank you for continuing with us. Thank you, Councillor McKenzie. Any other comments? Councillor Monkoff Swain to close. Any closing comments? None for me. All right, thank you then. I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, subject to the uh, approval process, Mr. Shores, you'll look after us there. and. Uh, Congratulations, Ernst and Young. Thank you for uh, the support. Yeah. Despite the fact that you got a, a team member from Toronto and a team member from Calgary, I don't know, but whatever. This is all good. I can't. I can't <laughs> wait to wait to be in Edmonton. <laughs> I, I, I knew the Toronto fact. I wasn't aware of the Calgary fact. Of that um, have we, can you go back, Mr. Shores? Can we go back on voting, or is that? <laughs> <laughs> She's not wearing. She's not wearing a Flames jersey, so that's a positive thing. Yeah, don't worry, I'll get a flame. I'll get an Oilers jersey just for this. All right. <laughs> slip here. Uh, well, uh, Al, is there anything left on the agenda? Uh, just your closing comments and adjournment. Well, for a first board meeting, I thought. Uh, uh, we've come together quite well and uh, we did a lot of work in an hour and 40 minutes. And thanks to uh, the, as Sam said early, very professional way through the various agenda items. And for my council, my board member colleagues, thank you very much for your engagement and for your comments today. Well done. And uh, Councillor Walters. 
I was just waving goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I'll make the motion to adjourn. And uh, all in favor? Is that, is that a debatable motion? No, you don't have no, to. You, no, just you, just, you just close the meeting. All you do is close the meeting, Wes. Okay. The meeting. Go home. Go home. The meeting is closed. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. All right. See you soon. Thank you, Carol. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye now.